hey, I totally saw you there. So finals are coming up in about three weeks, and I realized that the studying for those was going to affect my video output schedule. So I'm doing some calculations right now to figure out when my next video will be ready. And if these numbers are correct, looks like it'll be coming out mid-October. Well, you know what that means. So it's October, and you know what that means. It's time to get spooky. Play something scary. So today we're taking a look at a scary indie game. In the wide world of scary stuff, nothing gets the spooks going quite like a good horror game. And in the world of indie games, one particular title stands out. Bendy and the Ink Machine. This game took the internet by storm in 2017 and reminded people that indie horror games can actually have you doing things and still be scary. Scott Cawthon, please, you've milked your franchise into the ground. Let it die for crying out loud, please. <clears throat> what was I talking about again? Oh, right. <clears throat> Mendy. When this game's first chapter made its debut on the World Wide Web, the internet took to it in a frenzy. As more and more chapters were developed, the story progressed, wrapping up with a pretty interesting conclusion. And I have to give the developers credit. The Meet Lee and Mike Moo did an amazing job at creating a game that stands out from its competition. Its distinct style and unique story give it a good balance of scary and unique charm that also makes it a really nice fit for your local hot topic. Now, I wouldn't be the first to admit this game isn't perfect. Levels can be tedious, enemies can be challenging to hit, hitboxes are weird, crosshairs are weird. The game has issues, but we're not taking a focus on those today. See, what we're going to look at today is how this game was able to achieve something most games can only dream of pulling off. Its relationship with its community. Now, to understand this, we're first going to take a look at what gives Bendy the chance to pull this off, and then look at just what it is that the dev team has been able to do with this ability. Like most all of the games I've reviewed so far. Okay, I've only reviewed two of them. Shut up. Bendy and the Ink Machine originally began life as a free demo of the first chapter. It was released on Itch.io and later Steam, and then when the internet grabbed hold of it, it blew up. Quickly. Thanks in part to popular YouTubers like Jacksepticeye and Markiplier. Now, before we go any further, let's take a moment and talk about episodic games. For those unaware, an episodic video game is a video game of a shorter length that's commercially released as an installment to a continuous and larger series. Episodic games differ from conventional video games in that they often contain less content, but are developed on a more frequent basis. This can be advantageous to developers, since it gets the game to market faster, while also providing them the chance to develop the game in smaller, more manageable chunks. While Bendy and the Ink Machine was a single game, the development style used a lot of those episodic techniques in its creation. The first chapter was released for free on Steam, and then subsequent chapters were worked on, fine-tuned, and released as downloadable content that could be purchased for about $5. I actually bought a couple of these chapters, you can still see them in my Steam library. Once all five chapters were complete, the game was retouched and sold as a complete package for about $20. When the game initially launched, these episodic releases gave the team the chance to better develop and improve the upcoming levels, as well as go back to previous levels and retouch and improve them. Compare any popular YouTuber's playthrough of the first chapter to the game now, and you can see some of the major changes that took place. And it's pretty impressive to see what they did, from small things like retexturing character models to even going as far to implement new sections of gameplay to give a chapter more depth. And these updates and changes gave the team the ability to do something unique with their community involvement. Something that a lot of games don't have the ability to do now. On February 25th, 2017, Will Allen of the channel DA Games released his Bendy and the Ink Machine song, Built Our Machine. The song was popular to say the least. 
So imagine the world's surprise when players making their way through Chapter 2 turned on a radio and heard, lo and behold, the exact same song. This was the first, and definitely not the last, time that fan content would be implemented in the game. Popular YouTubers such as Jacksepticeye and Will himself would appear as cameos in future installments, and other songs from popular creators would appear in the game. You could even get achievements from playing them. But probably the most popular way that the community became involved with Bendy's development was through their art contest. The contest gave artists the chance to make creations based on Bendy and have those creations featured in the game. Some of the results from Chapter 5 even got a cartoon created from their works and were shown off in the final moments of the game. Even outside of the game, both the Meatly and Mike Mood have been incredibly supportive of their community. You can frequently see their comments on YouTube videos about Bendy and the Ink Machine, or spot them taking the time to talk to fans on Twitter. They know that their community is what gave the game its popularity, and they've embraced it and supported it ever since. With all of these elements put together, you can see just how Bendy and the Ink Machine was able to work with its community and create something amazing. The Meatly understands the work that goes into building a successful community, and went above and beyond to ensure that the results were incredible. While indie developers may not be making their games in an episodic form, I still see a lot of that community being used in smaller levels, from Discord servers for the studios and their games, to open demos designed for community feedback. For those developers looking to make their games more community-driven, we can all agree, the Meatly understands just what to do. And with Kindly Be Studios, the official name of the studio, in the works of developing both another original title and another Bendy game, I'm excited to see how that community is going to come into play with their next projects. Also, to the Meatly, if you're watching this, two things. One, love your YouTube channel. It's really good. And two, if you need like a badly recorded voice actor for some reason or another, shoot me a DM. Thanks, fam. So there you have it. An in-depth look at just how the Meatly, Mike Mood, and the team over at Kindly Beast Games manages to pull off such an impressive relationship with their community. If you want to check out more of the stuff that they're working on, you can check out their channel right over here, as well as a link to the uh, Joey Drew or the Link Penny and the Ink Machine official channel up here. And uh, make sure to tune in next time, which based on my calculations looks like it's going to be... I just realized I forgot to carry the one in this problem. I'll be right back. I need to recheck this math and make sure it works out right. Okay, so it turns out this is, video is going to be coming out on time after all. I don't know what I was doing with this math. Cool.